Virtual learning days provide preparation for future need. And Chloe Hollis completes her investigative report on EHS Food Service. Hello and welcome to KEHS. I'm Will Roca. And I'm Pierce Perna. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Night Vision News. In an effort to maintain familiarity with virtual learning experience, Pitt School continues to have quarterly virtual days to refresh faculty and student skills in the unique learning environment. Here's reporter Nathan Kalman with more on the benefits of this process. Hi, I'm Nathan Kalman, and today we will be teaching you how virtual day works. Today we met with the principal to ask him about virtual day. Good morning, everybody. So the question I received is, why do we do a virtual day? And what are, what are my thoughts about it? Well, one of them is that we are trying to prepare you for college and university. And we know that technology is heavily used at, at to colleges and universities. So we want to make sure that you're prepared for it. The other thing is that it's, realistically, it's realistic for us to be preparing you all for any kind of situation similar to the pandemic we just recently went through to be prepared for an emergency situation like that so your education does not stop. So those are the two primary reasons why we do it and we hope that you are benefit from it. That was virtual day, back to the studio. Thank you, Nathan, for that informative report. In the second part of her investigation on the food service at Episcopal, reporter Chloe Hollis provides a deeper insight on what happens with the leftovers. Let's head back to her with more on the story. Last week, we discussed food preparation and the work that goes into providing meals for the school. Now that we know all about food prep, we investigated the topic of leftovers. In addition to last week's food prep installment, Ms. Borges Pacini has more to share about food service and leftovers. The thing is that whatever is left over, if it could be utilized immediately, and this is all through uh, food services, right? If it's something that can be reutilized, like a vegetable to make a soup the next day, we will go ahead and do that. The health department determines that we can actually use food up to a week if it's stored correctly. We, I don't like to do that. I like to use it within 24 hours because it maintains its freshness and we want to give the best quality of food to everybody here. So just, you know, use it immediately. Along with reutilizing ingredients, Episcopal also partners with charities to lessen food waste. So we partner with a company that's called Second Servings actually and they, they have like, um, I want to say like uh, cafeterias as well and they make food for the homeless. So whenever, particularly if there's a big event or, or if somebody doesn't tell me, hey, the whole, I don't know, there's going to be 300 kids, that doesn't happen very often, but there's going to be 300 kids that are going to be off campus and we've already prepped the meal, then that, we contact them, uh, it's a nonprofit organization, we cool down the food, we actually freeze it, they come pick it up the next day. It happens very seldomly because we do try to keep, we've, we've done this for such a long time, we already know about, you know, how, what the quantity that we're going to prep, so the waste is, is somewhat, you know, small. It's it, we really don't waste a lot of food. At the end of the school year, if there's anything that is gonna perish during the summer that is uh, that is perishable and, we can, and it has a short shelf life and we cannot use it, for example, cereal, we'll go ahead and call them and they'll come and pick it up and then you know it goes to the homeless. So that's, that's a good deed right there. Food service has always played a big role here at EHS. From early mornings to after school activities, we learned that Miss Borges Passini and her team does it all. I'm Chloe Hollis, back to you in the studio. The EHS Food Service team is extraordinary. Thank you for that investigative series, Chloe. As the end of the first quarter comes to close, clubs and honor societies are filled up with members and are getting prepared to make an impact on the EHS community. KEHS is getting a closer look at what the National English Honor Society has in store for the rest of the year. Reporter Jack McKinney has more on this, this story. The National English Honor Society induction was this Wednesday, and we asked President Saria Dev What's going on during the ceremony? I have to plan meetings and I also am planning the induction that's on Wednesday at 5.15 at the chapel. We will have readings from Mr. Codrington and Ms. Hernandez and I'll be reading a poem by Evelyn Underhill who are dedicating the new Honor Society Chapter 2. We also asked faculty member Ms. Hernandez and Mary Louise what their thoughts on the club are. I was approached last year with an opportunity to take over as sponsor. Um, one of the reasons I think it's really important is making literature a part of your life is a lifelong process 
and starting it young is something that's like super crucial and important to making sure it can be a continued it has a, a place of value in your life over a long period of time so it's something that I'm passionate about and it's something that I do personally in my own life and so being able to share that with other students and being able to help cultivate that love and that prioritize prioritization of literature is something that I was really dedicated to being able to do this year you have to have a 3.5 GPA or above um, you have to have at least one year of English completed and you um, have to have had at least an A minus in all level English classes or a B plus in honors English classes so excited to be inducted in NEHS I've been looking forward to it for years because I have a passion for writing and I love to read and write and pursue English um, outside of the classroom and I'm excited for this opportunity. To find out more information about NEHS, you can look them up on the school website. Reporting for KEHS News, I'm Jack McKinney. Thank you, Jack. The classes of 2026 and 2025 have begun test preparation for the SAT. With more on the story, here's reporter Ryan Gatto. The sophomores and juniors were here on Wednesday to take the PSAT. Today, I interviewed teachers and students to get a further look on the story. So with the new digital uh, PSAT and the new digital SAT that's going to be coming online um, in the spring, one of the major differences would be the timing. And so the tests, the digital tests are a lot shorter, um, you know, for the digital exams. And so that would be the number one difference, I would say, in terms of the paper test versus the digital test. A lot of students, based on the studies that the College Board has done, they also feel that a lot of students prefer the digital exam. Um, um, because it really has everything that they're going to need in that um, Blue Book exam app. So students have the ability to annotate, the calculator is built in, students who have accommodations, the majority of those accommodations are going to be built into the app as well. So it really has provided a lot of ease and I would say kind of streamline some things not only for um, testers but also for the staff that coordinate and um, put together the logistics of the test. Um, after taking it, I felt very well prepared for when I take the real thing for college. There are several ways that the PSAT will benefit students. I would say mainly for our students who are in 10th grade, it really is kind of a practice test, right? It gives them that exposure to what an SAT will look like, what a testing environment will look like. And for our juniors who are taking the PSAT, it gives them that same advantage as well as it's going to allow them possible opportunities to be considered for various scholarship opportunities, whether it be through national merit or whether it be through um, one of the national recognition programs offered by the College Board. Important for KHS News, I'm Ryan Gatto. Back to the studio. Thanks, Ryan. Fall break signals a time for students to catch their breath as the first quarter of the school year comes to an end. KEHS scoured the campus to find how students recharge over this extended weekend. Here's Tyler Bloomgren with more on this time of rest. Hi, I'm Tyler Blumgren. I'm a reporter from KEHS, and on this newscast, we're going to be talking about Columbus Day and interviewing various people about their thoughts and if they enjoyed Columbus Day or not. On the Monday of Columbus Day weekend, I was at home. I was chilling. I was hanging out. I, uh, I took a nap. I went and worked out. It was pretty productive. I did some homework and got ahead. I got to take some time to evaluate our loss and uh, see how the football team could get better before I could report that to the coaching staff. You know, Columbus Day has always been pretty nice. Uh, as a senior this year, we got an extra day off, so we got a total of five days off to just enjoy ourselves, have fun, have a nice, long, relaxing weekend. Um, we especially needed that because we came off of a sad loss against St. John's on Friday, um, but expect to get our get back here in the near future. Uh, Columbus Day has just been a nice time to recollect and get ahead of what we need to be on. Again, I'm Tyler Bloomer. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Tyler. I know I enjoyed Virtual Thursdays. And now let's join KEHS Sports Anchor with, this, with his Pillar Update. Now that we are midway through the October sports teams have shown their support for the fight against breast cancer, you may have noticed teams throughout this athletic pillar wearing pink. Reporter Marisol Hess is here 
with a story sharing how each fall sports team has participated in Pink Out this month. With the fall athletic season coming to a close, athletes have participated in Pink Out. They have worn pink socks and pink accessories to show their support for the fight, ag fight against breast cancer. Cheer has swapped out their typical blue and white pom-poms for bright pink ones. Field hockey had their pink out game Tuesday, October 17th, and volleyball had their pink out game Thursday, the 19th of October. Assistant coach Miss Bostick shares how girls volleyball has participated in pink out this week. Um, we love celebrating pink out and breast cancer awareness, so we it kind of has a personal um, touch from us, or we love to, I guess, talk about it or spread awareness. Um, we, the sub varsity teams put together posters, so block out cancer, or um, yesterday we had our big dig, dig pink day. Girls volleyball had a big win for their pink out game as well. All four teams got to play and we had, the, the parents actually helped out putting posters all around the gym. We had balloons, streamers. Um, the seniors actually put together a, a fundraiser, which is a big sale, and they are gonna take their uh, profit or the money that they got to a breast cancer breast cancer foundation. Not only fall athletes, but all Episcopal students are invited to participate in Pink Out. Hot pink t-shirts have been sold at lunch all week for Friday night's varsity football game. Overall, Pink Out was a great way to bring the e EHS community together and to support an important cause. I'm Marisol Hess, back to the studio. Well, that's all we have this week on Night Vision News. I'm Pierce Barina. And I'm Will Roca. From all of us at KEHS News, thank you for joining us. And, and go, go Knights! Knights.